Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you about the Contraband stream in Black Ops 4, which is similar to a battle pass from Fortnite and is the new loot system in the game. I do want to give a quick plug to my Mixer channel where I'm going to be streaming later tonight. It's double tier weekend, so I'm earning my tiers twice as fast and I have some in-depths to work on. So if you guys want to stop by later tonight, I'll be streaming there. And the general format of this video is going to be factual uh, statements about the Contraband stream, some positive opinions, some negative opinions, and some recommended fixes. Gameplay is mostly going going to be blackout with a little bit of PC blackout here and there because the most recent update significantly improved the performance and I've been able to play a lot more PC lately, but let's talk about the factual things about the contraband stream. In case you all haven't already heard or experienced most of this, the black market was added back into Black Ops 4, except this time instead of getting supply drops, you progress through a pass or contraband stream from tiers 1 through 200. You have about 65, I think 68 days, so roughly two months time to do it all at least from the start and each tier that you unlock gets you a new reward up to 200. The rewards you unlock can be tier specific such as an emblem, an emote, a skin, or a weapon or something like that at a specific tier or in most cases they're going to be a random case that you get to open on that tier that will give you a random reward. If you, you can get duplicates out of these cases which would frustrate me a lot but if you get three duplicates you get to re-roll and get a whole new brand new case. Most of the rewards on the tiers are emotes, emblems, avatars, uh, skins are a little bit less common, but they're there, face paints, gestures, stuff like that. Guns and really high and rare tier skins are way less common on the reward system. I think that there are th two, maybe three guns out of all 200 tiers, and probably about five or six skins. Most of the rewards you're going to get, as a matter of fact, about 75% of them are going to be the cases. So it is still very case heavy in that sense. I will say, and this in the factual section is, is almost too much, but the guns are super nice looking, especially the Mastercraft ones. They're nice looking in that they're unique. They have unique models, colors, animations. They are well-made brand new items. Moving along, you can buy each tier for 100 COD points each, which depending on how many points you buy in a bundle, is basically a dollar a tier, which is pretty similar to Fortnite's uh, 150 V-Bucks per tier. There are daily weekly challenges that you can work on, however, instead of weekly challenges or daily challenges that get you tiers in the pass, instead you buy these challenges for COD points and then you progress along a secondary challenge tier uh, to get some specific reward. The ones that I've seen most frequently are skins, so it'll be something like you buy the skin challenge for 800 COD points, which is like $8, and you have 10 levels to work through, or 10 tiers to progress through, and once you hit tier 10, you get the skin, and you get one reward all the way through, and these are like 50-50 between gestures, emotes, and cases, so mostly cases and the higher tier skin is what you're going to get out of this. And unfortunately, the tiers progress solely based on time. It doesn't matter if you win a lot, it doesn't matter if you have a high score per minute. It doesn't matter what mode you play. Well, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but it's solely based on time. As of right now, one tier is about 40 to 50 minutes per of playtime or just shy of an hour. So even though it's not technically accurate, the easiest way to think of it is that one hour is one tier. And uh, there are double tiers on this weekend, which is nice. That's one of the reasons I'm going to be streaming on Mixer today. So I'm going to try to get some of those double tiers and unlock some better stuff so I don't have to spend money on any of this. And I'm hoping that more events will be coming in the future. Moving along, I wanted to share with you some positive opinions on this before we move into the criticism. I do think that this is certainly an improvement over the Black Ops 3 and Advanced Warfare system. Those were very, very rough. It was much harder to get any sort of reward for your money in that, and it can be very expensive to get new items and new weapons. It's comparable to MWR because there are collections you can complete and challenges to do and it's pretty grindy, but I don't think that this system is an improvement over Infinite Warfare or World War II. Now, I was not the biggest fan of Infinite Warfare gameplay-wise, but they had a very consumer-friendly microtransaction system, even with the variants and stuff. They were relatively easy to unlock, you could spend points on them, you had daily challenges, and for most of the DLC weapons you would get those for free. In World War II, it was a little rougher at start, but later on on, we had a whole ton of daily and weekly challenges that would give you cool gun skins or camos or specific rewards for free if you decided to grind them out or just points or depot credits or whatever it was going to be. So World War II was again a very consumer friendly system. This one isn't quite as consumer friendly. It's not as 
Uh, it's, it's not as amazing as those two, but it's way better than Black Ops 3. So it's an improvement in that sense, and that's why I put it in the positive section. This, as far as I can tell, is supposed to replace Supply Drops. Supply Drops were the uh, monetization system of choice for Call of Duty for a very, very long time, but Supply Drops are no longer in vogue. There is legislation against them starting in the European Union. There's uh, perhaps restrictions in China. You, you know, U.S. senators and stuff are looking at it, so game companies are moving away from Supply Drops really fast to avoid legislation. That being said, Supply Drops are about 75% of the tiers in the contraband stream, so it's still feel supply drop heavy, but I think the biggest difference is that as you buy tiers and progress through this, there are fixed rewards. You know how many drops you're going to get, it's one a dollar, but you also know that after I buy five drops, after I buy six drops or ten drops or whatever, I'm going to get this specific item. So if you wanted a particular skin, you could just, uh, and it was worth like five dollars for you, you could just grind up to five levels, then drop five dollars and get exactly the skin that you wanted. The price to buy the item that you want is always diminished by the amount of time that you put in so that it's not just I spend money to buy these things you can now spend time and money and just sort of balance it however you want you can obviously grind out all 200 tiers that would take a long time or you can spend a ton of money or you can kind of mix and match which is what I might end up doing a little bit though I try not to spend too much on microtransactions I do think that the ability to see the progress bar is a very big and important thing because that lets me know exactly when my next reward is coming I don't, I don't think the progress bar is really that different of a system than what it was in previous COD games, because previous COD games in general didn't reward you with more or less supply drops depending on your performance. It was mostly time-based with little performance metrics here and there, but at least this time you know when the time is coming, you know when the next bar is coming, and you know what it's worth to get that next drop. It's very good and important to be able to see it, to, to kind of just know, in my opinion. The daily and weekly purchase choices are also a good idea, especially since those tend to be much more about fixed items. While not exact, and it definitely requires you to put in time to progress the tiers as well, that's probably to increase player retention on Treyarch's part, it is a direct purchase method. It is a I spend money, I get exactly what I want kind of method versus a more random loot box system, which drives me insane. A slightly more esoteric positive opinion is that if you cap how many rewards people can get, because to the best of my knowledge, at level 200, you don't get any more drops and you don't get any more rewards. What that means is that you also kind of put a cap between the haves and haves nots. In previous Call of Duty games, you could just buy as many supply drops as you wanted. So a person with more money than cents could drop like five grand and have literally every item in the game and the coolest stuff and the rarest skins. And a guy who doesn't play too much just doesn't have 1% of that. He could never grind up enough to that. But putting a cap on it now puts a hard cap on like how much goodies you can allow your top tier players to acquire. And it doesn't feel as bad if you don't have all of that stuff. And finally, positive opinion, probably the most positive opinion I've got about this, is the Mastercraft weapons are insanely good looking. Every single Mastercraft weapon that I have seen just looks amazing. They have unique skins, they're unicorns, they're sharks, they have animated camos, they make noises, they glow, they have unique models and animations, and everything about them looks neat. It's, I want to have more Mastercraft weapons. I want to unlock more Mastercrafts and get more cool stuff. Because it's been a long time since Call of Duty has put in cosmetics in the game that I really thirsted for. But I'm going to let you know that I am thirsty about the Mastercraft weapons. But that does lead me into the next section of negatives. And that there aren't that many Mastercraft weapons on the tier list. Uh, you would get most of them through the drops, which is frustrating. I think if I bought the whole pass, I would get two, uh, maybe three Mastercraft weapons, which isn't very fun. I would like more of them on there, but it's, since that's what most people want to get, there obviously have to be higher tier rewards and they have to be a little bit more random. It also sucks that zombies people get completely shafted by this system. Uh, as far as I'm aware, your zombies gameplay and time does not contribute to the contraband stream. You don't have any zombies camos to unlock. There's no zombies characters, gestures, outfits, zombies power-ups. Zombies is running a completely different uh, system that's entirely fueled by... what well, I, I don't even play zombies enough to the name of it, which is embarrassing. Your alchemical potions that you unlock. Your nebulium, neb nebulium, whatever that stuff is. So the contraband stream, which is supposed to be an important fundamental part of the game for all players is largely absent from zombies, which just screws them over. 
And it's also largely absent from Blackout. Now you can get sprays, which you can use in Blackout, and you can get a few skins, which you can use in Blackout. I think I think there's only one right now. I think it's just Hudson. You can unlock Hudson, but he's pretty high level. Hudson had incomplete audio, which is not great either. But most of the stuff you're getting, such as or most of the stuff that people want, like the Mastercraft weapons, you can't use in Blackout, which is unfortunate. You can use the emotes and stuff too, of course, but... And that's just a general Blackout complaint, is that I would really like to be able to put camos on my guns in Blackout. Just, it would give me something worth doing, and other Battle Royale games have that. I don't know if it's a performance thing, I don't know if it's an issue of not being able to recognize the gun off of a body or something, but I do think that Blackout badly needs the ability to equip camos and Mastercraft weapons. Moving along, the system's probably not good enough for me to spend my money on, or at least not much of it, for several reasons. One of those reasons is that I'm just naturally cheap on this sort of thing. I try really hard not to spend much money on microtransactions. There have been some games that I've blown money on in the past, uh, usually with justifications that this is my job or something like that. But in general, I'm really, really tight with microtransactions. Even in Fortnite, where it's just simple direct purchases, I don't direct purchase a whole lot of stuff. I hold back really, really hard, so it's very difficult to get me to spend money. I'm one of those kind of customers. The other thing that I don't like about this is that Black Ops Pass holders only got between 1,000 and 8,000 CP, depending on the edition that you bought of the game. There were various editions with different levels, which is between 10 and 80 tiers. However, that extra uh, CP that you got that you could spend on tiers wasn't just for the Black Ops Pass. It was because you bought a Pro Edition or Digital Edition or Deluxe Edition. If you bought the regular edition of the game, the Plain Jane game, and you go and buy the Black Ops Pass for $50 today, you get nothing toward all of these unlocks. You do get some Blackout skins every season or every DLC cycle, I think, and you get all the new maps in the DLC cycle, and you're supposed to get some other fun rewards too. I, I can't even keep track of all the stuff that's supposed to be in the pass. However, the Contraband stream is exempt from that. So if you spend $50 on the pass, you just don't get any cosmetics or any unlocks or rewards for it from the stream. And you would say, okay, well, whatever, you know, this is a separate thing, right? But the game is $60 in itself, and then the pass is $50 on top of that, which is $110. And then I still have to buy microtransactions, which is, this is kind of an Activision special of getting you to spend as much money as you can, but isn't $110 enough? If I spend $110 on Call of Duty, isn't that, isn't that enough? Like, isn't that enough money to justify something? I can't even get a head start on the tiers. I thought it would be great, like, if season pass holders or Black Ops pass holders get tiers 1 through 40 for free, or like 40 free tiers, spend them whenever you want, something like that, but we don't. Another big problem with the tier system is that they're just time-based and very little else, to the best of my knowledge. It doesn't matter how many wins you get, it doesn't matter what mode you're playing, it doesn't matter how good or bad you do, if you're with a squad, if you just, just sit there and just barely participate because you're too drunk to even walk around, you all earn your goodies at about the same rate, which means that they're kind of miserable and unfun to grind out compared to daily weekly challenges. Doing challenges in Infinite Warfare or World War II is significantly more fun than just knowing, okay, uh, I guess like five more hours to play and that's it. There's no, there's no nothing else. You just have to play for five hours to get whatever it is that you were working to unlock, or in this case, about 200 hours for the whole pass, which is just miserable. That's not fun. And this whole pass system was created to compete with Fortnite. Fortnite has the whole like weekly challenges and hidden battle stars, and every one of them is something fun, unique, like jump an ATK through a burning ring of fire, kill 15 people with pistols, land tilted towers, and get a pickaxe kill. Just like little things like that. Whereas this is like, I don't know, go, go play 30 hours hours and come back we got some loot boxes for you the side effect of this is that it also leads to a ton of people going afk in lobbies as soon as the contraband stream came in i noticed that there were way more afk people in lobbies dudes just and you can't go fully afk you can't sit there and do nothing or the game will kick you so i saw people would tape rubber bands to their controllers so that their characters would just kind of like walk around and in, in just random directions and spin in circles and stuff so that they wouldn't get kicked for inactivity and just leave their system in queue all day that's what they would do they would just go to work and leave it there and i see these people all the time perhaps treyarch should put in a stronger afk kick selection if we're going to be doing time 
based loot, but that's miserable. That makes my game unfun. It's not fun for me to have like two AFK dudes on my team, and it's not, it's a little bit fun to shoot people that are AFK because it's just free kills and stuff, but after a little bit it gets boring. The whole reason we're playing multiplayer isn't for guaranteed wins, it's so that we can challenge ourselves and play against people that shoot back and have brains and have fun. Killing AFK dudes just, it, like, it's cute for a bit, but I get tired of it. At the end of the video, I want to offer some simple fixes for improvements to the system. I think that there should be challenges for tiers, daily or weekly challenges, not ones that you buy for the skins, but something like today, get 100 kills with an assault rifle to get one tier, and for this week, you have to win 25 games of domination for two tiers and a skin, or roughly the World War II method, because World War II did it super well, or just something like melee people and get two free tiers, just almost anything, some kind of challenge to make it less monotonous would be great. I do think that Black Ops pass holders should get a decent head start. Obviously, you can't give them the whole pass, because that kills player retention and is bad for the whole monetization model. But it would be nice if you could say, hey, Black Ops pass holders, you get a quarter of the pass for free just starting out. Here's your 50 tiers. And there's good stuff in those 50 tiers and crates, and you might get something nice. That's a really good benefit if you are a season pass holder. And finally, I would like to recommend more events for the tier system, the contraband stream. This is going to be the first one we're doing with the double tiers, where you just earn them at twice the rate. And I don't think... I, I think that there's going to be more of these to come. I remember during E3, Treyarch was talking about how they're going to have more events and more one-time things and more just stuff going on with Black Ops 4 than any other previous Call of Duty game. So I, I think that there are more events coming. That would be my recommendation is to add more events, but I'm not really worried about that. More are on the way. Guys, that is all for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something useful. And I'm going to sit here for the rest of the day and debate whether or not I'm going to spend money to unlock the, the unicorn skin for my gun. Because I want the unicorn skin because when you put long barrel on it, the horn grows, which is childishly amusing to me, but I don't know if it's worth the money that I'm going to have to pay for it. And uh, yeah, that's it. Drifter out.